Hey guys, it's Kaler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going back to Adobe XD for another web design tutorial. Today we have a product page where you can add any product you want here in the center. I'm featuring here Amazon's new Echo Dot, but you can replace that with whatever you like. It's got a nice layout that can be interchanged for different products and different color schemes. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. Also, like always, if you guys are a member here on the channel and you want to grab the project file, head over to the community tab. I just uploaded that for you guys. So head over there and download that if you're interested. All right, to get started here, I've got a normal 1920 by 1080 artboard, and I'm just going to turn on the layout grid. I'm then going to lower the opacity on these columns to about 6%, which is what I usually use, just to see through it a bit there. And I think we can leave the rest of these values alone for this video. I'm also going to drag out a guideline here and snap that at 140 on each side of our 12 column grid. And this is going to be the max width of our website. And real quickly before we start wireframing, I just wanna let you guys know about today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Spline, a 3D design tool that allows you to easily create and publish 3D web experiences. The thing that really sets Spline apart from other 3D design tools is that you're building 3D in real time. So on top of working with normal things like text and basic geometric shapes and 3D models, you can add things like animation states and events like mouse hover or mouse tap to really build out an interactive 3D web experience. And on top of all of that, Spline makes it super simple to publish your 3D experience with just a click of a button. If you'd like to check out Spline, you can go to spline.design or click the link at the top of the description. Let's start off with our navigation in the top right. I'll just grab the type tool and we'll just say nav link. That'll be our placeholder. Today we're going to be using, I believe it's pronounced Monstrat. I'm really terrible at pronouncing things, uh, but that's the font we're going to be using right there. And I'm going to set this to semi bold for our navigation links. Let's also align these to the right and all capital on those. And we're going to drag that to the right side, positioning it about 40 points below the top of the artboard there. And I'm going to have five links. I'll just duplicate that a few times here. And I'm going to put 70 point spacing in between each one of these. And I'm holding option or alt to click and drag out a duplicate each time until we have five links. Then we can select those command G to group them. And then I'm going to activate stack. And that's going to say 70 points in between each of these, which is what we're looking for. And now as I edit the text, they're automatically going to scale for me. So I'll just throw in our real text here. That's going to be our navigation. Now on the left side, we're going to have the logo. And for this, we'll just create a simple text logo. We'll bump that up to 26 for the font size and bump the weight up to bold. Left we'll align that and we'll set it to all caps. And we'll just center that vertically with our navigation. And if you want, you can group those together. For now, I'm just going to leave them separate though. So that's pretty much our navigation. The next thing we're going to do is highlight the product information on the left. So uh, the pricing starting point, the heading, our call to action, and then we're gonna have the product in the center with some versions of the product over here in a card form. So let's start on the left over here. So I'm just going to grab some font here to work with. So I just hold option and drag that down. And we're going to create a smaller heading. So this would be like an H5 or an H4. So pretty small. So we'll size this to 14 points. And we're going to bump that to semi bold. And we're going to say starting at. And then below this, we're going to have our price point, which we're going to scale that up a bit here. And we'll put in $49.99. And let's make that an even 50 for the font size. And it's a little too bold, so we'll drop that down to a medium weight. And we'll just position that about six points below that first heading there. And let's zoom out and see where we need to position this. I'm just going to align this visually. I think it needs to go about 140 below that logo. Looks good. Next is our H1. So we'll just drag out some text here and we're going to scale it up a bit. We'll make this 100 and black weight. It's a really bold font. And I'm just going to say all new echo dot. And then I want this to have the option of being lowercase as well. So we'll just remove that uppercase and we'll put that about 150 below the price there, pushing it just below center of the artboard. It looks like I think that'll do pretty nicely. Let's grab the type tool. That's T on the keyboard. And we'll just drag out a text area here and we'll use our columns and we'll do three columns there. I'm just going to put in some random letters and for the size of our body font, we'll go with the standard 16 
and regular weight. And we'll just paste some lorem ipsum in there. And we also need to adjust the line height so this looks readable. So we'll do 16 times 1.5 for 150% line height, which will give us a value of 24. We're gonna drop that about 30 points below that heading just to give it enough breathing room there, some good white space around it. And then I'm gonna grab a rectangle, and this is gonna be a placeholder for an icon. So we'll set it to about 24 by 24 for now. May need to scale that up later. And then we're gonna have some text beside it that says watch video. We'll set that to all uppercase. 16 weight looks good. And maybe it needs to be a little bit more bold, so we'll select semi bold there. And I think this icon is gonna be too small, so let's actually just go ahead and change that to 40 by 40, just so it's a little bit bigger. And we'll put this text about 16 points to the right of that. And selecting both of those, I'm gonna make sure they're centered aligned vertically. Command G to group them. And we'll go with 40 spacing below that paragraph. So just a little bit more than that paragraph is from that heading. Next, I'm gonna add some cards over here on the right. So I'll just grab the rectangle tool and drag out a rectangle. That's three columns wide. For the height on that, let's go with about 200 points. And we'll just make one of these and copy and paste it two more times. So first thing we need in here is the main heading for this. So we're just gonna say echo dot. So these are again gonna show different variations of the echo dot. So we'll just have that in here. And then below that, we're gonna say fourth generation. And then we're gonna have the price point. And then we'll put a icon in the corner. And we'll do a 48 by 48 rectangle as a placeholder for that. All right, so let's style our text here. First one is our heading. It needs to be a little bit bigger than this font here. So we'll go with 22 for the font size and semi bold looks good. So we'll just leave it at that. And I'm gonna make sure that's all uppercase. For the position on this, I'm gonna do 40 from the left side and 32 looks good from the top there. For our fourth generation text, it needs to be quite small. So we'll bump it all the way down to 12 and we'll put that four points below our heading. And then, so we have 32 spacing here, we'll just set that for the price down at the bottom, 32 points from the bottom of our rectangle. And we'll make sure that's left aligned with everything here. And 16 point font looks good there. So that's just a basic little card. So we'll grab everything there and Command G to group it. And we'll drag out a duplicate. And once more, holding Option or Alt while I click and drag. And we have 30 point space in between each of those. Command G to group them together and then we'll center them with the artboard there. And let's see if that's centered with this as well. Looks like it's just off a few points. So let's actually align this to the top of that. I think that'd look pretty good. And that's pretty close as well. Might want to grab all of this and just bump that down so the line's there. So we're creating some kind of visual axes there, creating a line from this text all the way over there and one from here to here. I think that'll make it for a nice layout. The last thing I want to do here is indent this starting at price point just a bit and put a little line next to starting at just to kind of make this pop a little bit more. We'll set that to a size of two. And I'm gonna set the height to 24. Then we'll center align that with starting at. And grabbing starting at and the price point, we'll put 16 points roughly in between the line and that text there. All right, so that's pretty much it for our wireframe. The only thing we're missing is our product. So I'm just going to select this artboard, double click on its name. I'll just name it wireframe. Command D to duplicate that. And we'll just drag it over a little bit here. And we'll change this one to design. All right, so to start off the design, I'm just gonna paste in a picture of the product and I'm gonna center it inside of the artboard there. So it's directly in the center of our layout. Next, let's add a bit of color. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set the background to 1A, 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 which is a nice, almost black color. Just because we're gonna be working in dark theme, I wanna go ahead and get that switched over so we can change all of our text to white. And don't forget to grab the little line over here and change the border to white. 
And then since we have our layout done, let's go ahead and get rid of our grid. So before we do that, I'm just gonna grab a rectangle and just drag one out. And I'm gonna send that all the way to the back with command shift, left square bracket key, just wider than six columns. It's touching the next columns there. So let's just change this to a different color. And this is gonna be a nice subtle black, 171717. It's just slightly darker than the background. You may barely be able to see it, which is what I'm going for, just nice and subtle. And then the next thing I wanna do is I also wanna add some lines on each side of the layout as well. I just think these little details really make this layout pop. So we'll just drag out a line here, straight down, holding shift to keep that perfectly straight. And we just wanna make sure that that is intersecting that indicator line there. And we can send that to the back with command shift, left square bracket key as well. Then I'm gonna hold option or alt and drag out a duplicate. And we're gonna to touch this one to the sides of these cards and you'll see that the contact text lines up properly with that as well. On these, I'm gonna select each one of them and I'm gonna select the border color and we're going with 353535. And then I'm also gonna drag down the opacity on this to 30%. I'm gonna go ahead and bump these up to two points. The only thing we have to do over here on the left side is change this watch video text to a color to make it pop. I'm just gonna use a yellow, which is F-E-B-E-02. -E and I'm gonna do the same thing for this icon here. So I'm just gonna to go to Nucleo, which is where I have all my icons and I can easily just drag these in. And then we will change, we'll change the fill color on that to that yellow as well. And then I think the only thing left we have to do is change the body text. And for that, we'll just lower the opacity to 50% just to make it a gray color. And then on our navigation, let's drop the opacity on that down to 80% just to make it a little bit lighter. You can also change these to a slight gray color instead of lowering the opacity. Also, our font up here is looking a little big, so I'm just gonna double click to get inside of the stack and I'm gonna select all of those and bump them down to 14 point font just because that 20 is really large. Uh, so that looks good and that auto adjusts, so we'll just hold shift and drag that over until it touches that line there and we'll make sure that's vertically centered with our logo as well. And then let's actually grab this line here. We'll hold Option or Alt on that and drag out a duplicate of that. And we'll just put that on this rectangle's edge there to make it pop a little bit more. And we'll do the same thing on this side. So we're gonna have four of these lines now. And then I think all we need to do now is finish off our card. So let's grab the icon that's gonna go in here. And I'm just gonna grab an external link icon I'm just gonna drag that into the pasteboard. And I'm also going to ungroup with Command Shift G each one of these cards. We'll just drag that into that rectangle and center it there. And then we'll hold Option or Alt to create a duplicate. And then we'll repeat that until we have a external link icon in each one of these rectangles. All right, so first up, Echo Dot, fourth generation, and the price point all looks good. Let's change these to a nice blue color. I'm just gonna paste that in. That is 1C68F0. And then we'll remove the border on that rectangle. And we're gonna set all of the text here to white. And just slightly lower the opacity here on the fourth generation to 90%, just so that there's a little bit of visual separation there. And for this rectangle, we're gonna remove the border. And we're gonna make this a slightly darker shade of this blue. Quick little way to do that is just set this to black and lower the opacity to about 20%. And by doing that, it's given the illusion that this is a darker shade of blue. And then I've set the icon to white. For our next card, we're just going to paste in a new title and grab that text below it there. So this is the Echo Dot with the LED display. And so we need to update all of our text and have a new price point at $59.99. And on this one, our rectangle is gonna be gray, so we'll paste that in, 353535 is the color code. And we'll remove the border. And we'll set all of these to white once again. And then this time, with our tagline here, we're gonna lower the opacity down to 60%. And this time, we're actually gonna put in a color here instead of doing that black trick for a darker shade. We'll just go 242424. And then we'll change that icon to white. So of having to do all that again, we'll just select that next card. And then we're just going to create a duplicate of this one. And now all we have to do is change that text. And with that, we have our finished design. I hope you guys enjoyed following along with this product page design here in Adobe XD.
If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. Also, special thanks to Spline for sponsoring today's video. If you'd like to check it out, go to spline.design or click on the link at the top of the description. Subscribe for more design and Adobe XD related content. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.